one. Uh, I guess that some of you know me, some don't, and might be wondering what, why will we be talking about video games tonight? Because we are from the Department of English. However, uh, we do have a course dedicated to the study of multimodality, and video games are a great uh, example of something that is called multimodal. So it has more than one thing communicating with you. One of them is obviously language, uh, but we also have picture. We have various sorts of sounds coming from it. Nowadays, you have video games with haptic feedback. So it uh, kind of uh, interacts with all your senses, which is a good thing. And uh, therefore, video games can be used for a multitude of purposes. And you are probably aware that English is perhaps the most dominant language in video games, way. Right? This is another reason to study it within uh, our programs. So that's why, why we study video games at all. And we have also had a couple of uh, MA theses uh, related to video games in one way or another. And I think that one of the authors is Among Us, uh, which is the name of a video game, Among Us. Uh, all right, so yeah, Mladen is Among Us, and he might share some of his uh, ideas. Uh, he's very welcome to do that because he had a, his MA thesis was, a, was, a, uh, was quite good uh, in comparing uh, three video games uh, related to uh, the topic of war. So uh, tonight we'll be talking about your gaming experiences, about my gaming experiences, and about uh, various interactions between science uh, in general and, and video games. So uh, do you have any ideas of why science would be interested of would be, would be interested in video games or, or not? Anyone? Any ideas? What could be studied? Have you ever heard of any studies related to video games or not? They say that video games are bad, that they yeah. can affect our cognitive abilities, that uh, they create addiction, which is perhaps true, but not, I mean, cannot be related to all video games. Much like other addictions, it is also, there are other factors yeah, involved, of right? Course. So, science wants to uh, study video games because <laughs> it, it wants to discover what it does to our uh, lives in general. So uh, I think it would include our cognition, it would include our experience, it would include various aspects of gaming. Uh, lately, it would also include the type of language that we find in video games, the way in which language interacts with other domains and so, so on and so forth. So science wants to basically to, 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 to criticize uh, video games for, for one reason or another, or to discover things that are related to gaming. So you've probably encountered articles saying that uh, uh, video games can improve our cognitive capacities, which is partially true, that video games can uh, affect our cognitive capacities in a, in, a, in a rather bad way, which is also partially true. It's all, I mean, it all depends on the type of video games you are playing and on the type of tasks you are exposing your uh, participants with. That would be uh, a short summary. Now let's go to the other side. Why would video games be interested in science? What is the thing that can that, that science can give them? I don't think that anyone will want to. Oh, Vanya. Vanya, Vanya. Yeah. yeah. Well, it can bring us some interesting like points. For example, the game Portal works with portals. We have some kind of uh, an idea of, uh, let's say, how would an object perform from a portal inertia, and you have the other like goods that you get, uh, like in the game, that speed you up, that make you jump higher. So you have some scientific points which you need to know to actually play the game. Perfect. Right. Yeah. So there is a. There, 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 there's a range of findings from the realm of science, uh, and these findings are used in, in while creating video games, and that's one of the reasons why uh, video games interact with science from their side. However, there is the, the, the uh, how we can call it, the, the financial or the, uh, the, the, the part of this collaboration or funny friendship that is related to their desire to sell more games. So, for instance, whereas scientific uh, approach to video games would study uh, 
let's say, uh, addiction in video games for, for the purpose of eliminating it, uh, if, if this research is funded by uh, the creators of video games, they, they will in fact want to learn on how to make it more addictive. So that's one reason. Uh, also, lately, you might, might, I mean, some of you might have heard, and many of you might have heard, uh, about eye trackers, which is a device uh, that is currently uh, being used uh, in, in our department. And Mladen Popovic is uh, our key expert in uh, the area of eye tracking. But uh, I know that several, uh, oh, not several, maybe all, uh, major developers invest a lot of in eye, a lot of money in eye tracking because they want to know what we do and what our uh, where our attention is while we play video games so uh, they will study the movement of our eyes uh, and they usually link it with the uh, with the amount of our attention that we uh, dedicate to different parts of the screen and they will use this in creating new video games so there is this we called it an unusual friendship because there is a uh, there are very many factors that are involved in in uh, this in set of interactions exist, exist, existing between uh, scientific research and video games and we do explore them in the department of english and we have many students who are who are interested in this and we have already had a couple of uh, uh, papers on this so, uh, what are the video games that you play nowadays? I, I'd like to know that because I mean, we have we have studied some of them, but I'm not sure whether they will be in line. Whether the the, the, the our choice of video games will be in line with what you play uh, these days. So, what are what are your video games? I'm afraid to know the answers. My last one was Elder Scrolls. Oh, well, that one is still popular. Stefan? Well, yeah, I can name a few, I guess. Um, I don't know right now. And Game called Sea of Thieves. I yeah, it, it should be a pirate game. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, that one. Uh, all right, I'm playing World of Warcraft and uh, let's say Apex Legends is a different genre. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 a bit different. When you think about the uh, World of Warcraft, uh, what's your experience with the overall addiction of the game? Because it was, I mean, it used to be heavily criticized with people dying in front of their screens and so on and so forth, somewhere in Korea, I think. Uh, have you experienced anything that could point to some sort of addiction when it comes to uh, World of Warcraft? All right, that's a fairly subjective thing. Like, uh, I haven't really ever faced, I was never faced with addiction for games, at least. I have played World of Warcraft since I was like 10 years old, but it was never really an addictive thing when I, for example, needed to focus in my studies, I've definitely stopped at the World of Warcraft. But, mm -hmm. um, I can see why people do get addicted to it. Um, to be honest, like, World of Warcraft has been a big part of my life in childhood. Um, but I personally never felt addicted. Maybe I did play a little bit too much, but it definitely wasn't addiction. Okay, okay, thank you for sharing this experience. But I, so I, I've been playing video games since 1991, believe it or not. So I, I, I celebrated my 30th anniversary yeah, this year. Died. Yeah, so that, I'm, I'm that old. So yeah, I'm, I'm 37, so I started around the age of seven, uh, I guess. Uh, but most of my, I, I'd say, uh, what's the, the term for the... Uh, most intensive period in, 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 in my life I played. When I had your, time, nerd, your nerd period. Yeah, yep. that would be perhaps linked with uh, nights and days I spent in playing all instances of GTA. Uh, so yeah, I, I was there since the beginning. So, uh, and it's, uh, it's quite hard because I, I don't play it anymore, but I don't play it... Um, yeah, I haven't played it since I started researching it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's 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 one of the bad sides of researching video games. You kind of lose interest in that. That's what happened with me and my story of of of, of doing my MA in literature. Really? Yeah. yeah. When I started studying literature, I stopped enjoying it. Oh yeah, that's um, true. That that is that that's what happens. Yes. And, and that's why I turned to linguistics in order to be able to read books again. Yeah. 
have you been able to read no. books again? No, uh, yeah. <laughs> never mind. Studying uh, literature kills love for books. Yeah, and, not really. And yeah. this is what what happened uh, uh, with with GTA and okay. uh, and at least I can share some results of of our research related to to GTA uh, and and this idea of GTA. I mean, the, the whole story of GTA Five is one of the most uh, popular games ever. Uh, is kind I mean, kind of I mean still puzzled me with what we found about the game. Uh, so what we have done, we tried to um, employ some sort of, of of I mean we treated GTA GTA as some sort of a small corpus, a corpus. In, I mean for those who do not know what corpus is, it's usually a, 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 a collection of texts you are right. analyzing or something like that. And there are, there are people among us who deal with the corpora. Vlada Figar is is one of them. Uh, he 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 had a, a, this this part of his uh, PhD was was done on a small specialized corpus, as he wants to, as he likes to call it. Uh, and we treated GTA as uh, some sort of a corpus. So, so we we went through uh, all the main missions in the game and tracked all the elements that appear in each mission. So one of the things that we tracked was uh, the game giving you instructions on how to use it. When I started playing video games in 1991, this tutorial part, so game teaching you right. how to play it, would last five minutes. It would happen at the very beginning of the game. Right. Even in Wolfenstein, I think. Remember? I guess. So you you get the yeah. basic controls, you know right. how to shoot, you know how to do things. And this, I mean, this this analysis has changed our perception of modern gaming. What GTA does is uh, instruct you on how to play it until the very end. Uh, why? Because it, it introduces new things all the time. Uh, you Has anyone guessed that you've played uh, GTA V? Uh, many of you. Or, or some of you, or any, right? Or, I mean, there is there a difference? I mean, yeah, the, there's differences, but yeah, but the GTA, GTA five franchise, yeah, 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 yeah but this yeah. one is, is is particularly okay. rich. So I'd like to 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 talk to a gamer. We have Marco Georgievich as Michael J. Right. Fox, uh, yeah, another childhood hero oh, yeah. of mine. Uh, yeah, so Marty McFly. Uh, okay, uh, anyone? Any GTA players? No. Well, I guess not, but I do understand them. I never found it interesting. I don't know why. GTA 5? No, yeah, for for a moment there, like the first <laughs> month, uh, you know, the, that you get engrossed in the game and you really want to go as far as you can. But then it just turns out that you have a lot of free styling there because you get an I, I would get annoyed by all the instructions, do this, do that, mission after mission after mission, mm -hmm. without a sense of accomplishment, for example, you know? Mm, there is a sense of accomplishment if you follow the 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 the, 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 the main storyline. Right, but you can go and do things in between. But yeah. what is what seems to be um, important is that game gives you new things to do, mm. new vehicles to control, new weapons to use, and so, so, so it gives you things all the time. You know, and I think this is deeply. Oops. No, it's fine. Uh, I think this is deeply linked with uh, how uh, the, 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 I'd say the, the brains of mm -hmm. children function nowadays. You need something to keep their attention all the time. So you need to change parameters around you in well, order to, to make it interesting. So it, 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 these, these kids are not the same as, as, as us, I think. Um, do, do we belong to the same generation? Or well, not? you're technically borderline gen x or was it no no no, no. Yeah. After, after boomers it's either gen x or yeah, gen z and, and now, yeah. we have gen and now z. we're yeah but we are elder i am elder millennial but yeah. you are somewhere in between an elder millennial i don't know if you're right about saying that these kids are different maybe because their attention is yeah. differently yeah. conditioned from the beginning but which what, what you were saying about the the game constantly giving you new input so basically your attention is constantly uh triggered yeah. right or mm -hmm. awakened 
that that's what we do at, in cognitive poetics. It's what we look for in a test in a text. The attractors that make your you interested yet again and again and again. Because yeah. otherwise, yeah, you, know, and I, you just get lost. I, I kind of believe that this is the result of, of, of this particular franchise interacting with science. Okay. So they okay. have probably used uh, information coming from all sorts of cognitive research related oh, yeah. to what modern gamers want. Right. And then they simply give it to them. And then they have this right. opportunity to release one game in seven or eight years, uh, which is a, a very a, a very nice position when it comes to a studio. So you you you, you release it, work on it, and then you move mm. to a new project. And this uh, the span of eight years is quite uh, quite big. So I think that they have announced a new game. Uh, a new think, GTA? Yeah, I think so. Uh, or it's it, it's close to being an announced. Uh, okay. But obviously, we do not have many GTA fans. Uh, over here, or there, they do not want to participate. But I simply know that everyone has played GTA at least once. It's a... we have all beaten up someone, a passerby in GTA. Yeah, there or crashed the car. Come on, uh, this is something that I don't think anyone's resisted. Uh, Stevan, yeah, Stevan, yeah, yeah. I just want to do it. Like, I mean, probably everyone at least heard of GTA. I have played the third one and San Andreas. Andreas in GTA 5 was like, to be honest, for me, they were all kind of boring. That's why I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> uh, and at least the fifth one, I did try. Like, I like the story. I'm not saying the story is actually phenomenal. Like, the characters and everything is great. But uh, the missions in between are extremely boring because, like, it, it is a shooting game where, I mean, it's a basic uh, real life simulator, yeah. but it's mostly a car shot simulator. Because you go from one place to a different place by car and then go back to the same place by car as well. Yeah, I think that that's because they're still following the original idea yeah. of, of, of being yeah, tensely or, or tightly bound to driving. Yeah, uh, Vanya, what's you? I mean, I have played like the GTA uh, San Andreas, uh, GTA 4, but I'm most, uh, they're good. They're fun, but I'm really into more arcade games like Saints Row or maybe like Sleeping Dogs or Watch Dogs, for example, where you have some fun and wacky stuff to do besides driving around and gang shootings. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, it's uh, it's all some yeah. Right now, I do not play uh, GTA. I, I play Humankind, which is a, a new strategy, oh, grand strategy no. game. Uh, civilization uh, game. Yeah, mm -hmm. really, very, it, very it's similar. It's like Civilization? To, yeah. But, That's my favorite game of all uh, time, forever. This one has features that will make you like it. Is it a uh, PC game or...? Yeah, it is a PC oh, game. Oh, okay. it's uh, bad that you said that. Uh, humankind is a... It, it has a depth that that's a, gives a new dimension to, okay. to it. So I, I'm, I'm glad that finally Civilization has a good competitor oh, because yeah. when there is a good competitor, you you can expect a, a, a good Civilization Seven. Right. I think, uh, yeah. So that's uh, that's that's what I'm I'm hoping for in in the world of food managers. So we have had <laughs> one game for ages, and I'm right. I'm hoping for some competition because that's what makes you make better games. So uh, now that we have humankind, I think that that, that uh, civilization will get will get better. And uh, I like the fact that in fact this is a good thing. That, 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 that this, no one likes GTA. Yeah. Uh, for for I mean the game has been criticized uh, heavily. Uh, it has been seen as some sort of a cause for some mass shootings yeah, in the States and so forth. Yeah, that is just ridiculous though. Uh, it? Yeah, I mean, it <laughs> might have triggered something, but it, uh, the, the, the problem would not be in the video game, I right, think. Right. Uh, it's, it's likely to be somewhere else. Uh, but it, of course, I mean, it, it's, it's easier to blame it on the, right. on the video game, of course. And on the society, on the whole. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so Vanya likes. Uh, arcades uh, and uh, Mladen likes um, indie games, I think. So uh, he, he he gave me a couple of nice uh, titles. So I bought some of these games, and they are in my 
long queue. Uh, but uh, I, I kind of, I'm right now. I'm kind of trying to play games that will not uh, desire, it will not require me to to pay much attention to them. So oh, I, yeah, so I, just for relaxing. Yeah, that, like, that's like how I relax. Cities in Motion and Humankind. That, that there are the games that I can play. So I can start playing it anytime and stop playing it anytime, which is good for this particular. Uh, moment, uh, but they are not as exciting when it comes to research as as um, as uh, GTA. GTA. Yeah, another another game that we have studied. We, we have tried to study tutorials in in uh, Batman Arkham Knight. That was uh, an, an, another attempt. So, but the the, the finding was not this mm -hmm. uh, revolutionary. We have just uh, seen that you can see the tutorial part of the game uh, as a some sort of a structure that interacts with players in a, in, a, in a highly specific way. So that's another another set of results that we got from from that. Uh, and in order to talk about, uh, there is another. Uh, so we are we are approaching video games. I mean, I guess that there are some, or I hope, yeah, there is at least one member of our department of psychology who has studied video games. Uh, and we have a couple of us at the department of English who have studied video games. But uh, we are studying from the perspective of what we call multimodality. But there is also this discipline that is called game studies. And it is particularly active in Nordic countries. So they are, uh, we have our, our dear colleague Milan Jacevic, right, right. who will have a PhD in video games in, in, in Copenhagen. And uh, he has submitted his thesis. Oh, he's, he's close. Yes, he's okay. waiting for okay. his defense and we are looking forward to to uh, it so uh it seems that we have produced uh, or we have uh, at least triggered uh, some people to become video game scholars and uh, this particular uh discipline he belongs to is really called game studies because this is something you can do uh, when you are studying uh i mean when you're doing your ma or phd right. in in denmark uh, here we are moving towards it, but uh, I'm not sure. So we'll uh, soon start uh, our MA program in digital humanities, and we hope to establish a BA program in digital humanities at, at some point. So uh, you will probably be able to study digital humanities at our faculty at some point, which is a good thing. Maybe some of our uh, BA students right now will want to take that for their uh, as they MA. So we'll, we'll see what happens. However, within this discipline of game studies that I mean, might become possible one day, there is a, there has been, a, I mean, we, they have encountered a, a huge debate between a group of scholars called ludologists and a group of scholars called narratologists. It, uh, uh, now that, that uh, Stevan mentioned uh, video games with a good story. Uh, if you concentrate on, on good stories, you are probably very likely to become a narratologist. Right. So, uh, narratologists would consider video games to be uh, just one branch of narratology. So, you will study it as some sort of a story. However, game video game scholars and ludologists, but and even the neutral ones, will never agree with that. Because there is more to gaming uh, as I mean, when, when compared to simply reading, or even if you're reading uh, a text that could be called uh, 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 an interactive text or right. a hypertext or something like that. Right, even the, uh, but I know why though, the narratologists would love to use immersion in the text as the same as participating or interfering mm -hmm. with the world of the game, but it, it is not the yeah, same. It, it, it can never, different. yeah, the level right. of activation can never get close to that. Right. Because you are, um, um, admit it or not, you are partially in the game. You're there, you're uh, right. controlling things in one way or another, even if the game is highly structured. Uh, so, uh, in, in that sense, uh, I guess that. Uh, we have to pay attention to both aspects and uh, nowadays we have these tones that are kind of trying to re reconcile narratologists and ludologists and, and some of the more more modern uh, game scholars would probably tell you that this is no longer a valid debate 
Right. So right. I guess that, 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 that it's, we, we, are, we are beyond that point. Uh, and we are moving towards a, a, a bunch of approaches to, to, to video games that are, it seem to be more interesting, that are fo focusing on, on, on things that really matter. So in, along those lines, I would like to mention Mladen's um, MA thesis. Mladen, are you there? Or not? Okay. Yes. You, just listening. Okay, then I'll, I'll talk about your MA thesis. Um, how convenient. How convenient. All right. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I mean, it, Mladen employed uh, something that we, uh, he doesn't consider it good, by the way. But your grade was good and you <laughs> didn't complain back then. <laughs> so you will have to enjoy me talking about your MA thesis. Uh, so uh, Mladen compared a couple of war-related video games, so those video games depicting war. And he wanted to approach a critical position, so he started for something that is called critical discourse analysis, and he applied it loosely, though, but that was what he could do with the corpus of video games. And he clearly compared that this distinction between uh, different approaches to how you portray war is in fact one of the things that we shall study. So Mladen, please like your uh, MA thesis. So in his thesis, he talked about uh, games that will clearly be uh, not in favor of warfare, but either um, seeing it as something that is completely normal, if, if not fun. And uh, he compared it to Spec Cop The Line in which war is criticized. So that is a, a something that is in fact very, uh, I think very valid when it, when it comes to uh, seeing how different, in, I mean, di different parts of the industry are approaching video games. And you can clearly see that the one, that the game that criticized war uh, was not uh, close to Call of Duty that kind of promotes it in one way or another. So if you are trying to criticize war, you, you, you will not sell your game, which tells us a little bit about our societies, unfortunately. And I think this is a very... Is that, though? Uh, I don't want to be a narratologist here, but in order for us to accept the sort of the terms and conditions of the world, the you know, the parameters of the world, the world has to be, to give you a certain sense, you know, if your task is to go and kill, then you want your surrounding to be that of war, right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, you no, know. no, no. In, in in both games, you do the same thing. You okay. go and kill. But one of the games tells you, look what you've done. Uh, yeah, but you don't want that, right? Yeah. We want pleasure from exactly. our achievement. Right? Exactly. And this is why you will sell one game and you will not sell the other. So yeah. there was no uh, new instance of Spec Ops after Spec Ops after two thousand twelve. Uh, and there have been a couple of instances of Call of Duty afterwards, and they are selling uh, yeah, regular. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. The sales are always, always good. So that's uh, that's one thing. And there are video games that, that criticize war in a slightly, maybe more passive way, such as uh, the, the the those belonging to Kojima's uh, period of friendship with uh, I mean with Konami, and in in that. Uh, in in, the, in in Metal Gear, in, in that series, you have uh, this, I mean, the, the, the mechanics that will, uh, let's say, tell you not to use weapons and the, 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 they, will, they will stimulate, I mean, eliminating your opponents in, the, let's say, more humane ways. Humane or yeah, just man? No, 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 no. I mean, you, you're, you're, you, can, you can just make them temporarily uh, I mean, unable to move. Oh, okay. That. But sometimes you, you will, okay. you will, yeah, uh, oh. yeah, sometimes they, they, you, you will kill your enemy. That, that's right. But it will not be as violent as in other games. But you, I mean, that, that's not a thing. You shall use your stealth techniques to yeah. go past them. That's Just like the, in Assassin's Creed, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Know? yeah. But in, I mean, Assassin's Creed. Okay. You're you obviously talking about assassins as well. Uh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, but uh, th this one was a bit more, uh, I mean, a bit deeper. I'd okay, say, Rainbow uh, Six, right? Uh, 
Yeah, it's also ta tactical. In a yeah, way. it's very yeah. tactical. I mean, it's war, but you have to mm -hmm. crouch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but, but with, with, with Kojima, it's, it always has some, I guess, uh, some, some meaning that is a bit deeper. Now, we had another MA thesis on Death Stranding. What is the name again? Okay. Yeah, Danilo did that one. So yeah, we've had a couple of, of, of them. So yeah, the, the, there, are, there are some video games that are more inspiring than some uh, others. So uh, in order to go further with this discussion, I'd like to have some input from, uh, from our audience and to, to hear whether they can rec recommend a game to me. Okay. Something that will make me uh, put it a bit, a bit higher in my gaming queue. <laughs> uh, okay. Disco Elysium is one of them. More than uh, su suggested that I play it, but I still haven't. I mean, I bought the game, but I still haven't played it. I started it, and it's uh, all Roblox. That's what my son plays. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> why Roblox gone? Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of worlds in Roblox, and I'm quite acquainted with the um, with the mechanics. Uh, and I was even um, yeah, my son made me buy one thousand Robux at one point, and I have no idea how he spent them. Uh, what is that though? Robux. Yeah. Is a is a is this? No, yeah, it's a currency. currency. No, no, but currency what is the Roblox, Roblox game? What? Roblox is a, so you have a character that you control in one of the worlds that you choose okay. and what you do in those worlds is different so you can fight with other people you can uh, i don't know uh, make some things work you can dance you can <laughs> learn shapes and numbers if you are okay, so the simulation yeah. of life in different sort of yeah but it's, and a, it, it's a very strange life and you can also chat with other people and make friends and so forth. he has like 40 friends yeah uh and the, the conversation they are they're having are just funny yeah uh robots is community driven because people themselves can make the games so mm -hmm. it's like you can find something you're interested in let's say pokemon you can find again a similar Twitter, you can find some, maybe like a simulation of Call of Duty, or as Professor mentioned, like you have some like hit games, for example, where you have shapes and stuff like that. It's a really, it's an interesting thing. I'm not that into it myself, but I can understand the appeal of it. Yeah, and um, it, it leads us to, to another question. Can we learn anything from mm. video games and uh, how, how, how they can affect our uh, cognitive capacities. Yes, you can learn from video games. I, I'm quite convinced that uh, my, my older son uh, learned quite a bit oh, from, from, from video games, but he, was, he also had, he got some bad habits from, from video games. However, the, the thing is that you need to uh, use them selectively. You need to control the things that they, but you cannot always do it. Of course, uh, no. they are sometimes simply out of control. I found him entering the squid game world in roblox so it wasn't that that good so they, they were shooting I mean, they were yeah shooting each other and whatever not and and then they have these strange conversations i want to pee you don't want to pee no he wants to pee and yeah so it's uh, you have it's uh, uh, a bunch of yeah a bunch of little games on a website yeah it's either you can either play through the website or you can download the app and then it also i mean if you have your card number entered in, in oh. the, yeah, the, I know that uh, my, my friend's daughter spent uh, his 50 bucks on pizza or something like that. So yeah, you need to control things when you're talking about right. uh, kids and, and, and video games. That, that's the thing. Uh, there was, I mean, I've encountered a study recently saying that uh, video games cannot implicitly make kids acquire or, or help them acquire a secondary language. Oh, I think that's, that's uh, not... The, the, the study was a, a bit strange. Uh, maybe like, uh, this is... Transistor, the witness... Uh, yeah, the, or... the, the, the witnesses... Okay. Uh, yeah, it was the, the made by the same person as Braid. It's, an, it's the game that I studied with uh, Milan Natchevic. That was oh, our, our oh, first... Oh, okay. Our, 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 first uh, paper together uh, so yeah uh, yeah let me briefly go back to the the issue of language acquisition games uh, if you want to explicitly uh, make children uh, learn or, or, or help them learn a foreign language using the video game you need to do it actively so mm -hmm. you need to have some tasks you need to have 
some sort of a, a set of goals that we all know from the realm of the teaching methodology. Right. So you need to give them some goal in order to make to see their progress. Right, right. However, when they encounter uh, video games in a foreign language during what we call the critical period, for those who know, the, who do not know, the critical period is the period until the, the age of 11 or 12, right. when we are much more flexible when it comes to language acquisition. So we, uh, we can easily acquire language during this period. And if you, of course, expose a child to a, to a, to a set of video games in English, it will help them uh, acquire it. Right. So, for instance, I haven't had any explicit English language classes with my kids. However, Vedran, the, the, the older one, is uh, almost fluent in English because of interacting, interacting with the, right. the digital stuff. Uh, in, I hope, controlled way, more or less. Oh, don't worry about um, it. We all grew up playing games. Come on. Haven't we? Yeah. yeah well, I mean, same with me. From 93, which means I was, what, seven years old. Yeah. Yeah. From the from Wolfenstein and then you know I also wild guess that, that, that much of my English comes from video. I'm almost certain yeah, much of definitely. comes from, from playing video games, and it goes for some other people in the department. I I will mention Morgan for the uh, for the third time. His English is great, and I think it also comes largely from interacting with the video games and texts in English. Uh, so but he reads though. Yeah. He reads so much, yeah. so yeah. That, that should be just... He reads way too much, uh, but okay, we all love him. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh, uh, love yeah. is Madden's way of saying uh, lol. Da. Yeah, so... Yeah, I, I know this. Uh, Alright, he will, he will kill us for... Oh, that's fine. ...mentioning yeah. him th this much. You uh, think? Yeah, he, he had a. He, I hope he has electricity right now because he, he was uh, interrupted today. He couldn't finish his class, so there was there were four minutes left of his class. When right, he, we're talking he, about he, sciences and video games, and we yeah. have electricity shortages. Oh uh, yeah. I mean that's so ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, but all things can happen right, right here, sir. So right. They don't worry about that. Uh, all right. Um, any. Okay, now now a real question for you. I, I've I've tried. I, I've answered my question related to to some potentially uh, uh, interesting video game. But yeah, I, I, so uh, Nina has suggested playing Transistor, The Witness, The Room, and we we were here. Uh, I I I'm not acquainted with the first and the last. To be honest, maybe we could hear a word of two or why why it is why, why these are so. Uh, Nice. Well, for the last one we were here, uh, it requires you to play with a friend. And one uh, person is a librarian, the other is the explorer. So you have to communicate like what you see, how to explain the symbol that you see in the game to get to the exit. And for example, there is a part where there is a short film where you have to watch as a librarian uh, to see where the chess pieces go. You have to explain to the friend on the other side. And it, can help really with communication, you can play globally or like in a closed server. And games like uh, Transistor uh, for the story mostly, for the visuals. For example, uh, since I'm an artist, uh, I like to learn like from the games, the music, the visual arts, and the mechanics as well, they're like quite good, I would say. Nice, thank you. Yeah, so yeah, you are you're, you you will potentially be involved in the creation of video games, and many yeah. of our students are involved in 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 uh, video game development, yeah. which is another good thing for us. So uh, I think that nowadays we are preparing them to be in this industry from various uh, perspectives. Definitely, in, in literature, they uh, learn a lot about storytelling in our story retelling and, and essay writing courses they learn how to uh, create written stuff and uh, in, in our cognitive courses they learn yeah. how to uh, analyze it or approach it or, or gra how people grasp it and also nowadays we have courses where we actually analyze video games which is another good thing so I think that among other things we prepare our students for for the gaming Definitely. industry uh, which is a, a good thing for us. So uh, 
if I mean, if you are in, in, in your high school right now, uh, in, in the, if, you, if you go for the English department, you'll first of all be surrounded by gamers <laughs> sure. and, and, and some of your teachers will be gamers, which, is, uh, which might be a good environment for you, of course. Uh, so you can, you can consider it as, as one of your options. Um, I have never regretted it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Enrolling or being yeah. a gamer? Um, any of these. <laughs> Enrolling, being a gamer, studying video games, although um, I enjoy video games a bit less since I've started uh, analyzing them, but never mind. Uh, I still can enjoy the, those I haven't analyzed yet, um, which, is, which is fine. All right. Um, um, Alexandra Miller said, I think that The Witcher could be a good choice too. Yeah, The Witcher is a good uh, link between literature and video games. Many, yeah. many, many pieces of literature have been turned into video games, and some of uh, some of pieces, uh, yeah, and some pieces of uh, video games have be have uh, evolved into in, literature. In, in literature, literature, yeah. Into narratives, I think yeah. that Assassin's Creed is one of the examples. There were some really? books. Uh, Stirred by the, the this franchise, as far as I can remember, or even fan fiction. Maybe that's uh, yeah. The, yeah. And, okay. and the, the, the I would say Resident Evil. Yeah, I played Resident Evil uh, quite a lot in in the beginning. Uh, also, Silent Hill. Oh uh, yes, oh that for, was my for, favorite. For that's horror lover. Yeah, Stephen. Uh, well, yeah, just, sorry for interrupting. No worries. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to recommend like maybe some games that, like you would like. Think about, I guess. Um, so, like, maybe Professor Sanya might know or will like this. It's called Hellblade Senior Sacrifice. Which no. Is, you know, it's a Norse uh, based game. Okay. Um, and it's pretty much it's a very dark fantasy uh, game. Yeah. Uh, and it. I know this one. I know this one. Uh, uh, there are there are rocks uh, that have eyes in it. Yeah, it's oh. it, it's about about the this. Uh, I'd say mentally disturbed character, right? Yes. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah, this one is perfect and so beautiful, uh, among, among other things. Uh, yeah, it's on my list. Uh, but thank you for making me move it up the queue. Right. Stevanik, could you send me an email with the name of the game, please? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. I, I would love, actually, to analyze that one. That one could be analyzed from the perspective of, of, of cognitive narratology, right. from the perspective of cognitive psychology as well, yeah. and cognitive linguistics, why not? Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'll also try, you are in our... First year. Yeah, Stay you're, on, okay. If and we, if we uh, manage to start our semester on site, uh, I would also try to involve bits of gaming in our contemporary English too. Uh, we'll see if it'll be possible, but I'm really, really hoping for, for, for it. Red Dead Redemption, perfect. That's, uh, that's GTA in Wild Wild West. Um, yeah, basically. Uh, it should also be, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> better story. Light. yeah. All right. Dying Light. All right. We, we can save this chat. Yeah, we, I, that's what I was yeah. thinking. We need to screen sh screenshot all of this so that we can we can have it we for can, later. We can copy it somewhere yeah. if you are fine with, with if you are yeah. fine with that, of course. Um, yeah, Starcraft. Yeah, that's. Uh, now we are talking about uh, my youth. Uh, this now we're talking about how I'm a former addict, and I I don't play games because it, it, I get very 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 addicted. I can't stop until I uh, finish the game I, ever. I play them at night when everyone yeah. is asleep. Yeah. And I'm crazy. But never mind. Um, I will not read that. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, Half Life. It's a. Yeah, that's an old. A legend of a game. Right. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that, 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 I mean, that I'll use the, my, my time or not. No, I mean, yeah. if, if, they, if you guys have any more questions or anything to add, no one's ever mentioned Counter Strike. That's mm -hmm. what I was. Look at <laughs> that's for not a me, game for me. That was a, a GTA, uh, yeah, because I'm like, I'm, I just that's such no. a good shooter, isn't it? No, Doom is a good shooter, <laughs> okay, that that too. Um, yeah, maybe some mobile games like Figros, I guess, everything game with a story or two eyes, okay, mm -hmm. Russian learning simulator, yeah, yeah. 
Mina seems to like indie games, and that's great. Uh, I, ha I, I bought a bunch of indie games uh, as, as, as some sort of a bundle a couple of months ago. It was a, some sort of a, not a charity, but fundraising, and I bought a bunch of them, but I've yet to uh, install some of them and, and, and play them because there are usually good stories in them. Uh, that's on my list as well. Everything is on my list. Everything is on Dushan's list. Don't do this to him. Just maybe you should stop with the with it. I'm just kidding, of course. Yeah. Um, the long dark. The long dark. Yeah. Papers, please. Anyone? Is that a mm, uh, paper? Uh, papers, please. It should be a uh, an, an Android game or not? Not sure. Alan, we, I've seen that one. Uh, it's, it, it was uh, on a, some sort of a discount thing. But yeah, uh, papers. Yeah, I, I know papers, please. Yeah. Okay, you guys know a lot of you guys know a lot of games. Um, Definitely gamers. Yeah. So it's just your GDA that wasn't so, really a. So t there, there's too much to study and too much right. to analyze. But I, I don't want. I will never analyze those games that I like. Only, only, only right. the boring ones. Do you remember the first Tomb Raiders? Yeah. Tomb Raider, yeah. you know? I, I've never liked Tomb You never, Raider. no, uh, you, you're talking about Sony, right? Yeah, I'm so talking yeah. about PlayStation. But controls were so bad for that game. Tutorials as well. I mean, it was a, it was torture to play that game. But I love the story. No, yeah. The story is always amazing. This, this stories can, can save, uh, can save games. Yeah. That's, that's true, but they can also destroy them. True. That's, that's also true, or, or a lack of story right. that can destroy. Yeah, that's what, what what happened to Fallout seventy six, as far as I remember. It was too too boring for everyone. Um, Star Wars, the old yeah, I know it's Star Wars, the old Republic. Uh, it's good that you know it. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah, far, far, yeah, far Cry usually. Those are classics, more or less, right? Yeah. So. Or classic uh, franchises. Yeah, Dragon Age. And then, what was the name of the what? Disco. Disco Elysium. Elysium. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Madame. <laughs> I I can share sh share it with 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 Sanya. Uh, yeah, or, or give her my Steam account because I'm not using it right now. Um, Far Cry. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, yeah, we are. You see that you are. You you like. Uh, you know, they like good stories. Good story, story oriented. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Fuzz, Yeah, I know. I know that one. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's it. Phasmophobia. Yeah, it's uh, about uh, detecting ghosts in houses and things like that. I know that. Spooky. Uh, Baldur's Gate. Oh my goodness, you know, uh, Baldur's Gate. Uh, it's an old classic. I've played Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. I've also played this uh, arcade version for PS2. Uh, and now they have uh, released or will release Baldur's Gate 3, Valimir. So there is uh, much to... Oh, we can... Yeah, yeah. Isn't it similar to Age of Heroes or something like that? No, 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 no. no. It's... Uh, yeah, but... but Okay. It, it's similar to Neverwinter Nights, if you've played Neverwinter Nights. You've played everything. Uh, How did you get this far in life, um, with all the gameplay time? No idea. I, I am I, shocked. I, 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 am... I didn't get that far. Uh, Phasmophobia, I, it reminded me of a, an, an early video game that was one of the first to combine video material and gaming. It was called Phantasmagoria, hmm? from 1990-something. Okay. Uh, they, 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 they were still unborn <laughs> at that period. There was still just uh, hope. Yeah. Nine hours, nine versus nine doors and doors. Dun -gun -dun -gun yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've never heard of those, but we'll check them. I will check everything from, from this list. Uh, I, I trust you. Yeah. So, so maybe if anyone has yeah. any questions. Do you have any questions yeah. for us? This is a, 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 a production for Santa tonight. The gaming Santa. The gaming Santa. We should have organized a giveaway or something because if I if I had known that he was going to wear this, I would have organized a giveaway, a game to we, give away. We can do that later. Yeah, I mean, maybe we can. For, we, 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 next for, time. Next time. No, we, we'll we'll we'll. Uh, 
we'll do something. Now you all, you've already offered kids candy by saying that contemporary English too will have a, you know gaming elements. That's candy for first year students. So not only for these first year students, but also for our possible first year students that, that might be here with us. That's true. Uh, because once I get video games into C2, I will never remove them. <laughs> yeah. Any questions, guys? We, uh, one thing that I did remove mm -hmm. is, is, an, is an anime film that I used one year and everyone was laughing and I had to remove it because uh, there was a, a kissing scene or something like that and I was like, <laughs> so I had to remove it, but the, everything else is still in there. Um, as an essay topic or something. Of course, Maya, yeah. Who gave you the essay topic on, 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 on gaming? Oh my goodness. You? Who is it? Oh yeah, that's in, in, in contemporary English. Uh, yeah, it was either my favorite video game or my <laughs> book. It's a, it's a piece of homework. Your figures, right. It's a piece of homework, yeah. Uh, and that's how I know that they are gamers. And I'm lucky to have them in my classes. Yeah. He doesn't no. have favorites. Mm -hmm. No, no, nothing. You just said, you, you know, you, you wanted to know who the gamers were. I just said no. he doesn't have favorites. When it comes to students? Yeah. No. I don't know. <laughs> I hope I don't. Any questions, guys? But I like gamers. Yeah, I know you do. About science, though. I mean, has any one of you ever thought about uh, what goes into making a game? Like, what, what do you have to think about in order to make one game? Is it just... A simple matter of, of you know, uh, thinking of a story and then just putting a character to do something. You need a good storyteller or also a story writer. You need a good artist and you need a good programmer. Uh, when you combine these three, you'll probably get a good game. Uh, but usually you need more than only three people. Uh, you need to make it replayable, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, but there are some indie games that are indie that are not replayable, but uh, and they are usually smaller projects. But yeah, you uh, you that. Mm -hmm. beside that, coding, narrative, music, executive board, better, better testers. Yeah. yeah, of course. Uh, the, 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 if you're, we are talking about big projects, it's it's the uh, it's true. However, we also thought at one point about establishing some sort of a gaming hub. Mm -hmm. If we ever manage to uh, build uh, I mean, something new or to upgrade our uh, faculty building, yeah, there is this central piece of the faculty building that should be upgraded at some point, and I'm hoping that one of those rooms will be our gaming hub. Well, we'll try to get someone from the faculty of arts and someone from the faculty of electronic engineering working with our good storytellers and maybe some initial projects that could be financed from uh, different sources. Um, it's amazing. There is a recent branch of psychology which talks about mixing the realities, real life and game worlds, analyzing that they could... Oh, noticing many people that were dressed like video games characters, sounded very interesting, can't remember the name of the science. It's probably some sort of a subdiscipline. I, I haven't uh, heard about the, uh, the, these overlaps between our, our world and game worlds are mm, f more and more frequent. Uh, uh, and uh, in fact, it's not only, I mean, you, 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 we have had comic cons for ages. Right, so that's so not it, really it's, new. Yeah, it's now moving to the realm of games mm. uh, instead of comics, but... Or TV shows, uh, even. We, we like, about, we yeah. like to, to embellish our reality right. with right. some other realities. I guess that's right. normal. I mean, but, we do create even our reality, yeah. the one we think is real. No, no worries, Goran, it's okay. You have, you have, uh, Participated. That's that's fine. See. What is my, my what is your your what is my opinion on VR games? Hmm. I've tried them once. I'm still not too convinced, as they are kind of partial. Uh, okay. Um, my, 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 yeah. I'm. 
I lose the, the usual feeling of gaminess when really? I play VR games. Yeah, it, it gets closer to reality and loses uh, uh, ludic aspects. Right. Uh, but still, uh, I guess that's one of the frontiers of game de of the game development. But it's also applicable to some genres only, not every genre. Right. It's it required to become uh, VR friendly. Though, but it can be dangerous, can it? Well, I guess so, but yeah. gaming can generally be dangerous, <laughs> I guess. If you, you can get, like, yeah. you can injure your thumbs. Thumbs, that's right. Yeah. You can uh, hurt your eyes. Right. Or uh, you can hurt your brain. Right. But, I mean, you can, but it feels good. Though. You can do that by reading too much, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Used to be the case a long time ago. <laughs> Never mind. Um, Carpal tunnel. Yep. 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 That is our destiny. All of us who use the mouse. Um, esports. 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 Sorry, esport. I like sports. I don't like esports. I don't like when they wear football shirts and play football. And, yeah. I'm, I'm not a fan, to be honest, because I. I think that kids should do sports. Right, not esports. E I mean, esports can occupy some of their time, but right. uh, they should not be a replacement for sports. And I think that they are, uh, they have become, so uh, playing football is not holding your yeah. job bad. Yeah. I mean, They're... maybe we are a bit older, but I can understand driving a car or, you know, doing racing or any other sort of games, but playing sports, that's a bit... Yeah, yeah, but uh, Vladimir says... Um, it's still a relatively new genre, so it's kind of understandable that they are still quite limited, though there have been stellar experiences. Yeah, uh, VR is a technology, it's not a genre. Right. Uh, you, some, some, uh, some genres can be adapted to VR, some cannot. But yeah, mm -hmm. I agree that, that it, in some genres it will lead to great experiences. Uh, especially when you when, when VR includes the whole body, uh, oh, so yeah. yeah, not only the the visual aspect and your arms. Mm -hmm. If it, if you can wear a VR suit or something like that, it would be some new. Can you imagine the, it, tracing every single of your functions. And in and... fact, it will it will make your muscles move, right. which is a, a maybe a bit healthier way of gaining. <laughs> but still, but also more dangerous. Though. Yeah, yeah, could be. That's an interesting prospect, though. Yeah, I know that uh, I will. I, I will still not not like them that much. Um, uh, and then get thrown, thrown into a horror game. game. Yep. Yeah. Why yeah. not? You know, we we should experience that in our lifetime at least once. Just in a, in a in a controlled environment and all that. Yeah. Why not? I wouldn't uh, have anything against that. Right. Yeah. Right. Well. Right. Thank, Thank you for yeah. guys for this lovely evening. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, and uh, we might think of something similar in the second. Oh, definitely. Term. Right. Uh, well, yeah, we'll in see. In the spring semester, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for coming and thank you for spending your hour with us. Um, we hope we haven't been boring. Um, it is what it is. It is what it is. Mm -hmm.